Welcome to a new guide on this channel and on this occasion is the DCO 106 from Cherry Audio. Now this is not a review, it's a deep dive guide about this synth. Now everything on this guide is in chapters, so if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. If you like these guides or if you like what I do, like and subscribe of course, and if you have the money and you want me, you want to buy me a coffee, you can, everything is on the description. Okay, so let's begin and we are gonna start with the main thing, you know, the thing that makes sounds, which is the DCO is gonna be this section. And this is the recreation, maybe you didn't know, is a recreation of the Juno 106. Uh, probably you already knew about this. Uh, and it's uh, actually pretty cool. Even the oscillators, they have this smoothness. Uh, you know, uh, to the plugging, which is kind of a uh, great. We're gonna see it in a second. Now, when you start with the default patch, this is the way you start with the default patch. You know, you, you click a new and you start over. So there we go. So we have a new patch, and it sounds like this. And you, you're gonna see, you're gonna notice that it sounds. I want to say weird, but it sounds sounds like something going on. It's because the chorus is enabled by default. I'm gonna turn it off so we can see all the waveforms. You know, the the, the real shapes right here. Okay, so uh, by default. The patch is going to be using a pulse. In this case, I'm gonna go and just go right here and we can do a saw. And notice that when we do a saw, we have a tiny curve right here. It's not a perfect saw, so which is actually cool. It sounds a little bit darker than other saws, but this is the vibe of this of this synthesizer. So of course you have your range right here at the top and you can go low, you can go to 16, eight foot, four and two, pretty simple to understand. Then of course you can go and get this one, which is going to be a square or a pulse, if you want to call it pulse. And isn't again, the, they don't have, uh, they're rounded, right? This is not a perfect square. That's why it sounds different. Of course, you can play both at the same time and you're going to get something like that. And I'm, you know, boosting the signal so we can see the, uh, the oscillator right here. And what you can do on top of this, you can disable all the, of this and you're going to be getting another waveform, which is going to be, of course, like a square, but it's going to be a sub. So this one is going to be playing an octave lower than the other ones. If I play this and this, notice that this one is going to sound like there, and this one is lower. So when you make a mix of maybe all the oscillators, you're going to be getting some really cool sounds. Now on top of this, you can disable all the different, the three, uh, you know, oscillators, let's just call them oscillators, uh, that you have, and then you have the noise. So you can go all the way up on the noise with everything off and just play with the noise. And you can create, of course, uh, do some sound design with noise, create kicks and, you know, all of that. So that's it, you know, pretty much you have a noise, you have a sub, you can go up or down as much as you wish, and you can combine the different waveforms that you have available. You can play them all at once, or maybe just play one. So if you go to this one, notice that this one is, of course, a pulse, uh, square, but it kind of a narrows right here. It shows you right here that it's going, going narrow. And if you follow the uh, the line, it's going to say pulse width. And it's because, of course, you have this waveform, but you can alter the width of this waveform. And you can do it by, you know, by mainly three different ways. You can do it by manually, by using an envelope, or, or using an LFO. So if we do it manually, this one moving, this one will alter the width of the pulse. And of course, it's gonna sound narrow or wider. Right, pretty simple, right? So then, of course, you have the LFO, and if you go to the LFO side, and as you go to up on the pulse width modulation, it's gonna just do that. It's gonna kind of a, do something like this if I have to do it manually. And as you go up, of course, you're gonna be doing more because it's gonna travel more, you know, more ground. Right, pretty simple, right? So then the other thing what you can do, you can put this right in between, right in the middle, and you can use the envelope, which is this one, and we're gonna be talking about the envelopes in a second. So when you play a key, notice that, and maybe I'm gonna go all the way up and do something like that. Maybe something really slow, something like that. Notice that the uh, waveform, if I make it bigger, is kind of a, Growing from smaller to bigger or wider, let's say. So this is what the envelope is doing. It's providing an instruction with an envelope and it's kind of about doing something like this when we play a key and then going back to, you know, its own position. That's what we do with the envelopes. 
Now, some of the things I'm going to be talking about are pretty obvious. If you have experience, like the ADSR, I'm going to be talking about how this works. And if you have experience, uh, you know, learning how an ADSR is, is pretty basic for you. But maybe you're starting and this is your first synth. And I should be explaining this because this is a family show. I'm targeting pretty much anyone that wants to learn. All right, so let's go back. So you have your LFO that is going to be uh, kind of a performing or doing a constant modulation. And the envelope, if you have to define it, is a one-time modulation. You're going to do it, you're going to play a key, it's going to move, and then when you release the key, it's going to go back. It's a one-time, one kind of a one-shot modulation. And of course, if you do nothing, nothing is going to happen. And if you do it manually, you can do this manually with a modulator if you're using the DAW. All right, so let's go back. Now, then, of course, you must, you must be thinking, okay, so if I'm using an LFO, right, this is going to be the rate or the speed of the LFO. So this is going to be the speed of the LFO. Well, no, no, not really. The LFO is in a different section. We're going to be talking about this uh, in a second. So when we use the LFO right here, we are using this section. So when we go right here, this is what we'll do is pitch modulation. It's going to modulate the pitch of the, uh, of the os uh, oscillators. So it's pitch modulation, it got nothing to do with pulse width, but still, it's using the LFO to do this pitch modulation. And uh, yeah, that's what it is. That's it, that's the DCO, and it's a, it's a pretty easy uh, kind of a synth to learn. It's a perfect, if you're, a perfect synth if you're starting, uh, just like the, you know, the Mog or something like that. And uh, the DCOs are done, we are done with this section. This is all we can do. We can do this waveforms, change the range. Uh, get a sub if you want, get a little bit of noise and uh, do well, pulse width modulation and a little bit of pitch modulation and just and just doing this, you can create really cool sounds. If I go to the chorus, right, so really cool sounds and we didn't do anything. We just, you know, enable the sub, uh, the pulse width, a little bit of pulse modulation with the LFO. And that's it. And it gives you this vibe, this 80s, 90s kind of a sound. It's a really, really great synth. Now, let's go back. I'm going to go back to a new default. And we're going to talk about the next thing, which could be the VCF, uh, the, um, you know, the high pass filters. We could go to the filters. But in this case, since all the filters and the VCA and everything else, it's kind of a using the LFO, just like this section. I'm going to talk about the LFO and then we will go to this section. Okay, so LFO. It, so if you don't know what LFO means, it stands for L, uh, for low frequency oscillation or low frequency oscillator. And what it does is an oscillator, just like the ones we have right here. That's what it is. The only difference is that it's going super slow, and I mean super, super slow. And when it goes to slows, slow, it provides an instruction uh, of a modulation. That's why when we go right here, we can hear this, or maybe I'm gonna go to this one. We can hear this going kind of kind of a up and down. And right now it's super fast. So the LFO right here is going to affect the rate, which is going to be how fast it goes. If it goes super fast, you're not going to notice a lot of difference. But if you go slow, you can hear and you can see going up and down. And it's just smoothly going up and down. And this depends on the waveform that you're using. So right now the LFO, by default, it uses a triangle. And notice, notice how the triangle looks. It goes up and then down. It's like a ramp up and ramp down. And this is what it, the, the waveform is doing. It's going up and then down smoothly. So the other waveforms are going to do something different. For example, if I go to the sine wave, it's kind of a closer to the triangle. It gives us this kind of a motion, but it's a bit smoother. Because, of course, we have a smooth, you know, a smooth waveform right here. But the other ones are not going to be that smooth. For example, this one, if I go to the ramp, the sound is going to ramp. And at some point, notice that it's kind of a starting really hard and then kind of a going down. Then you have the other one, which is going to be the ramp down. This one is ramp up. If I go to the ramp down, it's going to start hard. And then it's going to go down. Down, down. That's because we start in hard and then go down. So the other ones are a little bit different, this ones. So this one is a pulse or a square LFO. And this one is like an on and off. Sounds like an ambulance if, uh, if we, do, we do it full, uh, full LFO. If I go right here, 
and maybe a little bit of noise, <laughs> a little bit of that. It sounds like an ambulance. And it's because, of course, this instruction, this uh, square is on and off, is all the way up and all the way down. Just like we can see right here, it goes up and then goes down. So that's what, you know, what's going on with this one. Maybe I'm gonna go to chest to saw. And eight. So yeah, we go up and we go down. Pretty hard. And it's, you know, the transition is harsh. Up and down. Okay, so then we have the other one, which is gonna be uh, the random. What is that? I'm playing a key and I'm holding, of course. And it's just going random. We cannot predict this. So that's it, that's all the different waveforms that you can use and of course they give you a different uh, different type of modulation. Now you have some other options right here like the delay and of course the sync and the mod will uh, on and off. So if I go to sync, uh, the sync what will do, it will sync uh, the uh, plugging with whatever tempo you have on your, uh, on your DAW, if you're using a DAW. So right now, for example, if I turn it off, we are going in hertz. That is the transition is very smooth because we are kind of a, you know, Sliding in hertz, but once you sync, you're gonna go in subdivisions And this depends on you know what you want to do. Maybe you want to be really in tempo with uh, your session So here is where you sync Now I'm gonna go and uh, maybe do a little bit of LFO not too aggressive something like that And then you have your delay now for now the delay is not just not doing anything as soon as I play a key the modulation will start right that's what's going on. And let me just get rid of the release. We're going to talk about that in a second. So as soon as I play a key, it's just, you know, the modulation kicks in, which makes sense. That's what we want. But in this case, maybe I want to do something uh, and I want to, uh, for the uh, LFO to kind of smooth in uh, to, you know, to do the, uh, the frequency modulation. So the delay is going to do that. And notice it says MS. It's because it works in milliseconds. It's a time control. If you go all the way up, it's going to be 5,000. If, if you don't know what the, how it works, 5,000 is 5 seconds. Is 1,000 is one, 1 second. So if I, if I do something like um, maybe maybe 2 seconds, now when I play a key, this delay is going to kind of a transition the LFO in. But it's going to take 2 seconds. I play a key, nothing happens, and then it's going to go to full modulation. And if I go slower, that is it's starting, and then it reaches full amplitude and we get the full modulation. So this is a very cool thing because maybe you're kind of a, you know, let's say that you're playing something, you're doing something with your keyboard, but you don't want this modulation right away. Right? So you're playing something and you're... You're playing this kind of a, you know, let's say, uh, melodies, so you don't want this modulation, but maybe at some point... When you play and you hold, you're going to get this modulation, but you only get it when you're holding. As soon as you release the key, it's going to start all over again and you are not going to be getting this modulation. But when you hold, it's going to give you this modulation. Of course, it's taking a long time. You can make it really short, something like that. And, that, and the modulation kicks in. Now, this is something that we could also use with the mod wheel. So, the delay in this case on this synthesizer, how it works, is that uh, if you use your mod wheel, uh, you're going to be doing this delay manually. I'm going to go all the way down, or, you know, I'm going to go all the way up. Doesn't matter. Because when you enable the mod wheel, it's going to turn off the delay. And it's because now the delay, you're going to be controlling it with your mod wheel. I'm going to be playing something. It is that we don't kind of get any delay. We just don't get it. Now, I'm gonna go to my mod wheel, and I'm gonna go up, and as soon as I go up, we are gonna be getting it, and I'm full right now on my mod wheel. But if I go down, we're gonna kind of, uh, you know, go down. We don't get it. So yeah, that's the main purpose of that button. You're doing kind of a, this uh, delay, you're transitioning in uh, the LFO uh, with the mod wheel. That's it, that's pretty much what it does. Okay, so let's uh, start with the new patch, and we are going to be talking about this section and then this section. Okay, so uh, first of all, you can cut frequencies, and you can cut low frequencies, and you can cut high frequencies, right? So right here, if you go to the high pass frequency, uh, I'm going to start again with the new patch, and I'm disabling the course. I'm going to bring something more so we have more sound. 
something like that. So we have, you know, a, kind of a full, you know, much richer kind of a sound. And if I do chorus, it's just gonna get wider. And for now, I'm just gonna leave it there and lower the volume just a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, so we can see that there's a lot going on right here. So the main point of the filters is to cut frequencies. So if we go to the high pass filter, it's going to cut the lows. And as I go up, notice that it's kind of a dipping the low frequencies. And if I go down, we get more of the lows. That's the main purpose of the high pass, is letting the high pass. Makes sense, right? So then we have the VCF, the VCF, and the VCF is going to cut high frequencies. It's the opposite of this one. So if I, I play a key, oops, sorry for that. If I play a key, I'm gonna go to this one and we are gonna be starting to cut high frequencies, right? And you may notice that this one, it's a lot less aggressive than this one. And that's the way it works. It's a lot less aggressive. It's not an aggressive cut. But the frequency, this one, the high pass, the, the low pass, is a lot more aggressive. We are just cutting a lot of the high frequencies. And you can even go all the way down and, you know, pretty much get nothing. So this one is a 24 dB per octave. So again, it is pretty aggressive. Now this one is pretty smooth and it's a, it's a of course it's a filter, but it works a little bit different from other filters. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's just kind of, like, kind of attenuating the lows. So again, it's pretty kind of a smooth. You don't get the same. That's, you know, kind of the vibe with the synth. That's fine. Okay, so we can cut the high frequencies. Then we have the resonance. So this is going to be a peak that we are going to be able to kind of introduce when everything uh, it's breaking. Right now we have this sound and we can see right here maybe the breaking point. And if we cannot find it, you can add resonance and that resonance is going to be a peak on that breaking point. So if I go up, it is it's right there. And we are going to be getting a bump on that section. As you go down, it's going to be, you know, very audible. And we can really see it right there. Now, if I go all the way up in the resonance, you're just going to be starting at this kind of a self-oscillation kind of a deal. We're just going to give you that sound. And for now, I'm just going to leave it right there. So this is what, of course, the resonance is going to do and what the frequencies will do. But then you have all these other controls and they will affect how the uh, frequency, how the cutoff works. So you have many ways to affect it. You have the velocity, you have the keyboard, the LFO, and the envelope. So we, the LFO, we kind of, uh, we kind of already know this because we did it with the uh, oscillators, with the DCOs. So if I play something and I go to the LFO, this is this, L, this LFO, and it's modulating that fast. And I'm gonna go slower. And as soon as I go up, what will happen is that it will start to modulate this knob. So it's like me doing something like this. Now, how much, of course, it depends on how much you're gonna you're gonna give right here. If I do a little bit, it's gonna be doing a it's gonna do a little bit. But if I go really aggressive, it's gonna be really aggressive, right? Right. So this is, of course, completely up to you, and it works it with this LFO. So if you change the LFO right here and you're using it right here. You know, you're going to be changing it for pretty much everything that it's using the LFO on the on the synthesizer. So you need to be aware of that. So remember that the LFO is a constant motion. But then you have the envelope. And the envelope is going to kind of, a, again, provide this instruction of how we should modulate the cut, the cut of frequency when we play a key. But first, before we go to the envelope, because we need to learn a little bit of, about how envelopes work. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the, the keyboard and the velocity. Now, the keyboard is pretty simple. Let me just kind of uh, stay right there. So, if you think about this, uh, what we do on the uh, on the cutoff, we cut high frequency. So, we are cutting this much. And as I go down, you know, we get less and less because we are cutting more high frequencies. Makes sense. Now the thing is that when I play low keys, seeing the fun since the fundamental frequencies are kind of right here, and I'm using cores and a lot of you know a lot of oscillators, so you know we have a lot of frequencies, but we can really hear the low frequencies. But notice that as I go up in the keys, this peak stays put, and this is of course what happens. It's very normal, you know. 
because the cutoff frequency is this cutoff, it's not adjusting to follow my keyboard, that's normal. So if I play low keys, maybe we are going to be able to hear them, but, but when I play some high keys, they're going to be really dark because we are cutting everything. And that's fine, if that's what you want. But the keyboard, what it will do, it will move or it will just, and I'm going to do it aggressively right here, it's going to create a slope on the keyboard. So it's going to be adjusting the frequency uh, if we are playing the keys. So if we are playing higher keys, this is going to be moved uh, up. And if I play lower keys, it's going to be moved down. So if I play a lower key, we can see that the pick is right here. But if I, as soon as I go up, it's going to adjust the cutoff to the keys I'm playing. So this is called key, key tracking. And now the peak is right here. And as you know, play more high keys, we are gonna be adjusting this. So now the, the uh, higher keys are not so dark anymore. If I go down right now on the keyboard, everything is gonna be dark because the resonance it, uh, and the cutoff, it's really, uh, you know, right here. So this is depends on what you want to do. Maybe you want to play some low frequencies, you're gonna be dark, but when you play high frequencies, you're gonna be able to hear them. The other way, they're gonna be really dark. And this, again, depends on what you want to do. Okay, so then you have the velocity, and for now, I'm gonna maybe go right here. So the velocity, it, uh, it's going to listen to your keyboard and how hard you hit the keys. So right now, it's not velocity sensitive. So if I play a key, this one is pretty much the same thing. But if I play it softer, it's the same thing. If I play hard, you can hear me just tapping the keyboard. It's the same thing. But the velocity will just adjust the velocity of the cutoff. So if I kind of a play softer, notice that we get almost nothing. So the frequency is just kind of a not giving us fall. But if I play hard, it's gonna be right there full. Of course, you can make a combination of all of this, and when you play softer, right? And then I'm gonna be playing harder. And if I play soft and hard. So again, you can make a combination of all of this and the LFO, and then of course we need to talk about the envelope. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, how it works. All right, so I'm gonna go to a new patch and we need to talk about the envelope modulation. Just like, you know, the one we have uh, we have right here on this section, well, this one is gonna be kind of a, you know, pretty much the same thing. We have it in the pulse width, but right here, we're gonna do it right here. Now, uh, if you think about this, uh, the envelope is going to control how the sound goes out and we can see the envelope on this section. Now on the real synthesizer, on the uh, on the hardware unit, you didn't have a dedicated envelope for the VCF or the uh, amp, so you didn't. And this, you know, kind of follows that idea. Some plugins today, they give you an extra envelope, but you know, this, this is how it worked. You know, you get the kind of the real thing right here. So, okay, so for example, uh, what we can do with the envelope, if we go all the way up, we're gonna be moving with this, by this fashion, you know, following this instruction, the cutoff frequency. So if I go to the resonance, let me do something that we can really kind of hear. And go down. And I'm gonna, again, cut high frequencies right here. For now, I'm gonna go all the way down on the envelope. I want to see that peak. Notice that we see it right there. All right. So the idea is that with this envelope, when I play a key, I want to be moving this when I play a key, something like this, something like that, right? And I'm doing it manually with my mouse. So uh, we need to talk about how the ADSR works. So uh, the ADSR is attack, decay, sustain, and release. And again, remember, this is a family show. If you already know what, a, what an ADSR, you can move on. If not, you need to stay. So an ADSR, it means attack, decay, sustain, and release. And uh, it's just an instruction of how we can modulate something. So the attack is a time control. The, the decay is a time control. The sustain is a level control. It's not a time. So I'm going to go all the way down in this one. And then the release is a time instruction, just like the attack, decay, and uh, the attack, and decay. I'm going to go all the way down in the release as well. And remember, we are always starting from a default patch. So when I play a key, what I want to do, I want to start right here at the bottom and go up. And then at some point, I want to smoothly go down. 
That's what I want to do. So that's first how we go up in time and how long is going to take this to go fully up there is going to be decided by the attack and how up we're going to go, how strong this is going to be, is going to be this envelope control. And for now, just going to go kind of a fall so we can kind of uh, really see this. So how long is going to take to go up is going to be the attack. And notice that when we go right here and we start moving it, it gives us milliseconds. So this is a time based control. It's going to take that amount of time to go up and you can go really slow. If I play a key right now. There you go. It's go goes up and for now I'm just going to go all the way down on the decay. It takes a long time to go up and then at some point it's going to die. So what we are doing right now, we are saying, since everything's down, we are saying, okay, when I play a key, slowly go up. But we have no instruction of how this should be going down. We know that it's going to go up by this amount, this time, it's going to take this amount of time. But then what I want to do, I want to go smoothly down. So that's the decay stage. And again, remember, it's a time measure. And you have different times. This one is a lot longer. Now this is 24,000 uh, milliseconds, which is 24 seconds. It's a lot. So if I go right here and maybe put it right there, it's going to take one second to go up, but at some point it's going to go down. So now if I play this, goes up and then slowly goes back. If I have no decay, the sound of course goes up and dies, right? It's just, I'm starting, I'm actually holding a key right now. If I hold, it dies and I'm still holding a key, I'm not releasing the keys. So the decay is going to do that. It's going to say, okay, when you go, uh, when you need to go down, go down in this fashion. It's just slowly going down. And at some point, the sound will die. That's the, you know, the main uh, purpose of the decay. Now then, of course, what happens if you want to sustain keys? Right now, I'm playing a key. It's going up, it's going down, and I'm keep holding, and I'm still holding, and I'm still holding. The sound is dying, and I'm still holding a key. But what if what if happens if, we, if I want to I want to sustain this because I'm still holding it, so that's going to be the sustain. So this is not a time control. The other ones decide how long you're going to go up and how long you're going to go down. The sustain is going to decide inside where you want to stay right here in between when you're holding the keys. So if I go up something like that, I'm going to go to fifty percent. This is going to go up slowly. It's going to go down. But since we have some sustain and I'm holding a key. Is going to stay put at some point in between of the whole thing, the whole range. And notice it now, the note's not dying and I'm holding it. Right, so of course if I go up, it's gonna be a little bit more aggressive. It's gonna go up, but it's not gonna go fully down. It's gonna stay right here in between some you know, spark right here. If I go down on the, on the sustain, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go down and it's gonna stay right here somewhere. So this is a kind of a level control where you want to kind of a sustain uh, your note. Now, you need to notice that with the release, if you go all the way up and you play a key, you're disabling the decay. You're saying I'm playing, a, I'm playing and while I'm holding the key, it's just going to stay right up there. It's not going to go down and notice it's just not going down. Now you can adjust this kind of a real time and see while you're holding the keys where you want to stay and you can kind of adjust, you know, where you want to be staying. Okay, so that's that's it. That's pretty pretty much it. But then you have the release. Now, notice that uh, I'm going to go uh, faster times, something like that. I'm going to play a key. It's going to go really fast and really, you know, fast back. And maybe I'm going to be sustaining at some point right there. I'm going to be, I'm holding the key, I'm still holding it, and I'm going to release it. So when I release the key, uh, the sound dies, right? Pretty simple. So uh, how it works is that what's going to happen when I release the keys? And for now, I'm just going to maybe do a little bit more sustain right there. So what's going to happen when we release the keys? Well, that's the release time. And this is a time-based control. So when I release the keys, how long is going to take for the sound to die? That's pretty much. And I should turn my phone off. So when I play a key, it's going to go uh, up, it's going to go down, and it's going to sustain. And it's sustaining, but now I'm going to release the key. And remember that the sound was the sound was dying before, instantly. But now, 
is going to take some time for it to die. So that's what the release means. How long is going to take for the sound to die? So on this synthesizer, uh, when we do modulation with the envelope and the cutoff filter, we are using this instruction, but at the same time, we are doing it with the volume. So the sound of the synthesizer is going out and this is being controlled by the, uh, VC, the VCA and it controls the volume, how it goes out. So we are using the same envelope to control the modulation and sometimes that sucks. That's why other plugins, maybe they give you the ability of, uh, ability of, uh, using a different envelope just for the, the filter and using a, a different envelope for the VCA. Now, this is not real. It's not close to the original hardware unit. What you get on the hardware is what you get right here. This is a kind of a, the perfect representation of what it was. So it's, you know, completely up to you. But, you know, not everything is bad. So right now we're using the envelope to use the modulation. But we're using the same thing for the VCA. Now, what you can do on the VCA, uh, you can turn it into a gate. So if you go to a gate, it's going to kind of a open and close while you're holding the keys. <laughs> but you don't get, you know, the release stage, but you get everything else. So if you're playing something like kind of a fast, now everything is super slow right here. Maybe we could do something like that. Maybe something like that, some release, maybe. Something like that, and notice that you don't realize the difference between both. But if I do the envelope, and I play the keys, we can hear that release, right? And it's because we are using uh, the same envelope for both. So that's it, that's how an envelope works in the uh, on the domain of the VCF. It's going to modulate whatever frequencies. Now, of course, uh, remember that you can adjust how much you're doing in terms of modulation. Maybe you want to do less, so, it's gonna be darker because you're doing less. You, you can go really aggressive or just, you know, do less. That's the whole point. Now, notice that you have an inverted uh, uh, instruction right here. And it's the same and then this, but now it's gonna be backwards. So if right I'm right here on kind of a, you know, the lower part, uh, we are not gonna be able to hear anything. So this is what this will do instead of doing this up and down, it's gonna do the opposite instruction. It's gonna follow and do something like that. So I need to start higher. And that is what is going on. I'm, I'm playing a key. This is starting right here, going down, and then slowly going up. So it's doing the opposite instruction. Let me do it. All right, so if you want to kill the sounds right here, you can kill it. Now I'm gonna be playing a key. We start up and we go down and then when we decay, we slowly go up and we are sustaining at some point. And when I release the keys, it's just gonna go back to where it was. So we are just doing the same thing we did before, but we are doing it backwards. That's pretty much the trick. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna do something like that. So now we know this section, we need to talk about this section, but now it's gonna be very simple because we already know how this works. Right, so I'm gonna go to a new start from the scratch and maybe I'm gonna bring this and maybe I'm gonna keep the course because it sounds cool. Now we need to talk about the VCA and we could have already did. The VCA is gonna follow this envelope and we already talked about how envelopes work. So you can go to, the, to that section. And uh, of course, this is gonna be controlling the volume. We are not doing anything with the VCF. It's kind of a full up, so we are not doing any modulation. So this is, of course, going to be controlling how the sound goes up and down in volume. If you want to sustain, or maybe we want to slow release. And it works the same way we did with the VCF. Right. Now then you have this. You have the level, you have the LFO, and you have the velocity. So this works the same way it works on the VCF. If I do LFO, we are going to be getting some up and down. But is that we can really hear? Maybe I'm gonna go up on the sustain. So it's going up and down. We can see it right here, right there. So this is a tremolo. And it's of course using the LFO to create this kind of a instruction, this modulation. We can use a different waveform just to get something different or maybe something more kind of a aggressive. Maybe I'm going too fast. I can 
here, right there. But if you think about this, this is just, again, is a tremble. It's a, basically a tremble up. So then you have the velocity, and this one will work the same way it works with the, the velocity of the VCF, but it's, uh, you know, it's gonna work with the uh, volumes, right? That's what we do with the VCA. So in this case, I'm gonna go all the way up on the velocity. And if I play soft, we can have a softer kind of a volume. But if I play hard, we're gonna get a lot more. That's the main point. Soft, it's gonna be very soft. But hard, we, go, we get more volume. So that's that's the whole point of the velocity. So uh, that's pretty much it. Now remember that we can use a gate. If you want to use the, the envelope uh, for the VCF, the full envelope, and we don't want to use it to control the, uh, the volumes, uh, the, the VCA, the amp, you just can go to a gate. And this is something really useful. And I use it the whole time. So the last thing we need to talk about is very simple. You have a level. And this, of course, is a level. And I'm gonna start a new patch. It's just a level. So, but maybe you're thinking, why do we get a level if we have a master volume? Well, this one will adjust the volume of the overall synth. This one is kind of about the full chain going to the amp. So, if I go down, it's gonna go down in volume, but it's not going fully down, notice? But it's just not going to full silence. So this one, what you can do, uh, you can use it to your, your advantage. If you drive it, what you're doing, you're adding saturation, so you're kind of uh, saturating the synth. And I'm gonna, if I go down right here, you can see it right there. That is smooth. And you're kind of uh, driving it. Of course, if you uh, are going up on the amount of things that you can do, is a more kind of a more complex sound. And I'm gonna go down in volume. By driving it, you're gonna get this hard clip kind of a sound. I want to say hard clip, but you know, you're clipping. Now I'm playing one single key. If I do multiple keys, it's gonna get, you know, really loud. And notice it sounds a little bit different. So again, you can use it to your advantage, just lower the volume and just go up on that one. And you're gonna get, you know, a much, a, a little bit, a bit, a bit of distortion. Right, so we're gonna go back to a new patch, like always, and we need to talk about the, the sections at the bottom. So we are gonna start with the bender. Now, the bender is a pretty easy section to understand. Now, it looks a little bit confusing because we we're kind of a, always, we, we don't get this section. What we can do with the bend wheel, and this is about the bend wheel, uh, what we can do, we can go up in pitch and down in pitch, right? If I play a, a note, I go up in pitch and I go down in pitch. That's what we can do and we are used to do, do uh, with the band wheel. And this is what you can do with this one. But you can make combinations of this. Now, when it says DCO, it means that it will uh, use the band wheel uh, to do pitch, to go up in pitch or go, go down in pitch. How much up and how much down? Notice if I hover, it's going to say 12 semitones. If you go down, you can do less and you can select the amount of semitones that you can go up and you can go down. That's the whole purpose, right? Pretty simple, right? We we we, we, all, we all we always have this option on pretty much all synthesizers. Now then you have other options, and this is cool. You have the VCF or VCA. So if I go down on this one, if I play something, I'm moving my uh, my bend wheel, and I'm we are not doing anything. Now with the VCF, if I go down right here, the VCF uh, it will modulate the VCF with the bend wheel. That's that's it. So if I do some amount, and notice right now it's a percentage. So if I play something, we are really dark because we are, of course, cutting a lot of frequencies right here, right? So if I move my bend, it's gonna go up, and when I release it, it's gonna go back to default, and you can go down, and you can go up and down, right? That's the whole purpose of this. Then you have the VCA, and the VCA is pretty obvious. Since this one controls volume, what we can do, we can go up and down in volume. Right now, it's just default, and if I go up, it's gonna go up in volume, and if I go down, it's gonna go down in volume. That's pretty much it. Now, the cool thing is that, of course, you can make a combination of them all. Something like that, let's say. If I go up, it's gonna open up the filter, and go up in pitch, or go down in volume at the same time. Right? So that's the whole purpose of the Venter. Pretty easy and straightforward. 
All right, so now we need to talk about the voice assign. So this one, uh, of course, the portamento uh, is the first thing I need to cover because it's very simple and this is kind of related to this. So portamento is going to be your uh, kind of a glide. You're going to be uh, smoothing or sliding to the next notes. So if I play something and then I play a different key, notice that it's kind of a gliding sometimes. And this is because I'm poly is going to be a little bit more kind of a, uh, I want to say useful, but it's going to be a little bit more no noticeable when you play mono. If I play a key and then I play a, do a different key, it's going to slide or glide to the next note. Right? And I'm holding a C, C2, I guess. And then if I play a C4, it's going to glide to that note. Right, so that's the whole, you know, whole deal. Now, of course, uh, right here, the speed is how long it's gonna, you know, it take to get to that spot. I'm playing a C2, a low key, and I'm gonna be playing a high key. So the travel from low to high or whatever key that you're playing is gonna be, you know, much faster. That's the whole purpose. Now, this one, uh, the portamento, uh, sometimes you have different modes, but this will do, it will uh, kind of a glide or slide from whatever key you're holding or you press previously. So, for example, if I do a C3 and I do a D3, it's gonna attempt to glide to that note. And the speed, you know, it's very fast, let me do, just do, make it obvious. I'm pressing C3. I'm gonna go to C2, and notice that it travels very short, because it's traveling from C2 to, uh, to D3. Now, if I play a D5 or D4, the travel is going to be longer. So this is how the portamento works, right? Now, of course, you can use it with the poly, but sometimes it doesn't work that well because you're, uh, have, you have multiple voices. Now, we're going to discuss this in a minute. Now, first, we need to talk about the modes that we have right here. So you have poly and you have two versions of poly. going to explain why in a minute. But then you have the number of voices. Uh, the voices are very important. So on this synthesizer, you can uh, do up to 16 voices. So if you go up, you get 16, which is not what you get on default patch, but you can do 16. Now, of course, uh, I only have uh, 10 fingers, unless I just put my butt uh, you know, on top of the keyboards, I'm not gonna be able to uh, play 16, but you can. So, okay, so that's it. Now, of course, you can go down in the amount of voices, uh, of voices, yeah, you can go to maybe four, and this means that you can only play four keys at a time. I'm gonna be one, two, three, and four, and that's it. I cannot do more. I'm playing a C minor seven. So, how is good? What can happen if I do five and I'm using four voices, right? I'm doing four. What happens if I do five? Well, the, what it does, or uh, uh, you know, maybe on different synthesizers, what this will do, it will just not let you play more keys. Right? But on this one, what it will do, it will steal voices, which is something actually cool. Because if you're playing one, two, three, four, and you play a new one on some synthesizers, it will not let you. But if I play a new key on this one, it's letting me. Now, this doesn't mean that it's adding a voice. It means that it's stealing a voice from the ones I'm already holding. Right now, I'm playing five. Now, the cool thing is that with the synthesizer, is not going to dispose the first key or the lower key. So if I play a low key, this is my low, and we can see the fundamental frequency right there. I play a new key, this is a minor seven, and now I'm gonna play a higher note, but notice that the low note, the low frequency stays there, so it's not stealing my low note. It's just taking it from a different key, right? So this is how it works in terms of, uh, you know, the voices and how many uh, keys you're playing. It's going to steal one voice. And it's, you know, pretty intelligent in how it's doing it. If you think, okay, you know, I want to play as many keys as you want. You, well, you, you have 16. You can go up to 16 and do whatever, you know, whatever it is that you need to do. Uh, so, you know, that's, it's not a problem. Maybe if you're if you're using a vintage synthesizer, the hardware unit, uh, you cannot do a lot of voices sometimes, and that sucks. But that's the way it works. Okay, so that's the poly, um, right? You, you can do up to sixteen, and so on, and so on, and so on. So then you have the poly two. What is the difference? The difference is that there is no difference. Uh, the only difference, uh, and if I do a chord, notice it just works the same way. It works exactly the same. The difference is that this one is optimized to work with the portamento. So if I do chords and I do voices, 
So that's the only difference. This voice kind of a, is uh, kind of attuned to be aligned with the portamento. So if you want to do a, a poly, poly and you want to play many keys or maybe a chord, it's going to work a little bit better when you glide notes. That's the only difference. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, since that one is out of the way, we can talk about the other modes. And these ones are pretty standard with any kind of a synthesizer that it's a, a polyphonic. So if I go to mono, it, this means that you can only play one single voice at a time. It means one single key. You cannot do more. If I go up or go down, it just doesn't care. We can only play one single key. So if I'm playing that one, uh, C2, lower note, and I play C3, the C2 is going to get this post. So that's how, how it works. Now, if you're asking how it works in um, order of priority, it's the last note priority. That's how it works on this synth. On this synth. So this means that I'm holding a C3, right? So I'm going to be playing a higher key, maybe a C4. It's going to dispose to C3. Now, if, what happens if I play a low key? And I'm holding keys, of course. I'm going to play a lower C. It's just letting me do it. So this calls last uh, note priority. So it means that uh, it doesn't matter if I'm playing uh, this key, I'm holding, and if I play a new key and it's higher or lower, it doesn't matter, right? It's just gonna go and dispose the one I'm holding. On some synths, you can, uh, you know, change or they work differently with the priority. You can only play higher notes or lower notes. In this case, you can do both. All right, so let's go to unison and uh, on, let me go back to default. On unison, uh, you get eight, of course, but you can go up to 16 unison voices, which is kind of a lot. Now, well, of course, unison, in the case of this synth, uh, it means that it's mono. You cannot use, uh, you cannot play many keys. You cannot do chords. You can only play one single key at a time. So it works just like this one. Now, the difference, if you don't know what unison means, is that you can stack the 16 voices on top of that note. And it's going to sound a little bit loud. So when I play a key, notice it's super loud and a bit phasey. And it's because we are grabbing the 16 voices that we have available and we are stacking them on top of each other. And we get this facing sound because now we are playing 16 voices on a single key. Now, of course, the unison magic starts to happen when you detune the voices. Now, uh, the, the 16 voices for unison is way too much for my taste. You can do a little bit more or less, maybe five, and that's just, you know, it's gonna do the trick. Now, this still sounds phasey. That makes sense. But all of this start, start sounds better when you detune the five voices. So I'm playing one key, we are uh, playing, synth, uh, synth is playing five voices, but when you detune the voices, you're separating them. And when you separate them, you get this kind of a super big sound. And that's the whole trick. Now you can go all the way up, and you're gonna be getting this kind of a beehive kind of a sound. Right. That's what unison means. You can play one single key at a time. On some synths, you can do poly unison, but not in this one. Uh, and using the detune, you are going to be separating the voices. Now, of course, you can do something like this. It doesn't sound bad, but, you know, it gives you this kind of a, you know, facey kind of a sound. And if you detune just a little bit, it's going to give you that magic. I'm doing 12% and that's enough. Right. So that's what unison means and all this, you know, different modes mean. Now, uh, of course, I am going to go back to poly, maybe to a new patch. And you have a chord mode. And this one, it's something that you get on pretty much uh, all the synths uh, from Cherry Audio. Uh, what you can do when you click on it is going to blink. So when it's blinking, it means it's uh, waiting for you to play a chord. So when you do so, it's going to remember that chord. So I'm going to do a minor uh, C, right? So that's my chord. So when you play it, it's going to be right there. It's going to steady light. It means that the, this is on memory. So now when you play one single key, it's, gonna t it's going to play the chord that you recorded. Now, of course, it's going to transpose it if you move to different keys. It's still, you know, the same intervals. But of course, it's going to transpose it. And this is, you know, really cool. So... Right, so you can get that vibe just playing one single key. And that's it, you know, that's the chord mode.
Right, so I'm going to go back to a new patch and we need to talk about the arpeggio. This is a very simple arpeggiator. Now, of course, to turn it on, you just need to turn it on. And as soon as you do so, you're going to get it. And I'm playing one single note. Let me do a C3. Right, of course, the rate is going to decide how fast you go. So right now, by default, it's on Hertz. So it's kind of a free. So if you slide up, it's going to go faster or you can go slower. Now, the envelopes are just maybe a little bit too long for my taste. We can do something like that, so we can really hear it. So you go fast, it's gonna go fast, it's gonna go slow, it's gonna go slow. Now, of course, since this is a plugin, you can sync to the BPM of your tempo, and now you're using subdivisions. Right? And you get, of course, this vibe. I'm playing one single key. Right. Now, of course, you can do a little bit more. Because right now I'm playing one single key. But what if you want to make a chord? Well, if you play a minor C in this case, it's going to, of course, travel through all the different notes and you're gonna get your arpeggio. Of course, you can go slow or you can go faster. And we go to 16. Now, of course, the pattern, how is doing the arpeggio is up. Right? So if you go down, it's gonna go the opposite way. And, you know, you can hear it. This is starting from my higher key and then going down, and right now it's starting from my lower key and going up. Now you have the up and down, which is going to be a combination of this. It's going to go up and down. And then you have your random, which means random. And remember, I'm playing a C minor, just three different keys. Of course, you can play you can hold, uh, uh, you know, as much as you want. Remember that you are using the voices, so you have eight, eight voices. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter because when you play, uh, every note plays is one single note. Now, can you do this with unison? Well, of course. Can you do this in mono? Yeah, well, yeah, it's just one single voice. Right. Now, let me go back to Paul because it's just way too loud. All right, so that's it. That's pretty much the whole arpeggio. Now, then you have the range, and this is something very common on uh, pretty much all the synthesizers with an arpeggiator. So right now, if I uh, play one note, or maybe, yeah, maybe a, a C minor, I'm gonna go slower, so we can really hear this. And I'm gonna go right there, maybe there. So right now, when you make a C minor, and I'm playing a C3, you know, that octave is going to go through those notes on one octave, which is whatever it is that you're playing. So the range means that now it's going to do whatever it is that you're playing, and then it's gonna repeat it an octave higher. So you're playing it on one octave and then going an octave higher. You can do the same thing with the three, it's gonna play with your octave, one octave higher, and then another octave higher. So you're uh, kind of a repeating the same thing on three octaves. Of course, it's to play the same keys. And then you can do four, which is the same thing, but it's your octave with the one you're playing plus three octaves at the top. What happens if you go down? It's gonna start all the way up from the highest octave and go down to the one you're holding. And then, you know, the same thing with the up, ran, up and down. And random, of course, is random. All right, so that's the range, and this is something very common that you get on almost kind of any arpeggiator. So then you have the halt. Right now, if I am uh, want to get an, uh, an arp, I need to press the keys. And I'm holding uh, my, uh, you know, the keys on my MIDI keyboard. But maybe I don't want to do this, and if I release the keys, it dies. So when you're doing something, you can hold it, and now I'm gonna release my MIDI keyboard, and it's gonna hold the notes for me. So I don't need to hold it. And this is very useful, even if you're playing one single key. Maybe I want to do something like, and I'm playing one single key right now. And I'm just playing different keys. Right? You can get this, you know, this vibe. All right. So that's what the hold means. It means it's going to hold whatever it is that you're playing. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go back to a default patch. And by default, when you go to a default patch, and I'm going to go and get something, you know, a little bit, a little bit more kind of a rich. And I'm going to cut some frequencies. Of course, you have the chorus enabled. And this is by default. You can turn it off and back on. So of course you have two different modes. The other mode 
She's gonna be a little bit more aggressive. And this one is less aggressive. Now, and this is something that you don't get on this plugin that you get on other plugins uh, or maybe, you know, the hardware unit. You can press both buttons at the same time. You know, I didn't find anything, uh, I couldn't find anything on the documentation. I guess you cannot do it on this one. Uh, but sometimes you can go and kind of enable or press both at the same time. And this is not going to give you a better or just bigger uh, kind of a coarse effect. It's going to give you kind of a facey sound. Uh, in this case, you cannot do it. You can only do one and two. Now, of course, since uh, we are doing chorus, the chorus is going to make everything super wide. And we can actually hear this. When I disable it, it's just super mono, super wide. Now, of course, you can change your stereo width because not everything in life is uh, super wide. And now we are just making the chorus mono. And this matters because then we're going to go to the de delay and the reverb. And remember, you know, you don't have to go super wide every single time. This is just not going to work on a mix. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the delay. I'm going to get rid of the course, so we are just going to be uh, getting the delay. So the delay is pretty simple. Turn it on, right, that's there. And then you have a representation of how much you're doing and you can sync it. So when you sync it, it's going to tell you right there what, you know, what subdivision you have. The time control is going to control that, of course. And if you unsync, it's going to go in milliseconds, right? There we go. And it's a nice delay. Now, if I go up, uh, notice that we have a damp. As it goes down, you know, the, the, the repetitions, they don't, they are not super equal to the original sound. Maybe the first one, so it kind of goes really down, has a slope right there. But it's, you know, it's fine. Every, every delay is a little bit different. In this case, of course, um, maybe gonna sync it and do something like, uh, maybe something like that. Right. Of course, you have your feedback control, and as you go up, you're gonna have more repetitions. And if you go all the way up, you're gonna get this, you know, feedbacking that you get with delays, which is super cool. Now, if you go no feedback, your repetition is gonna be just one, right? Just one repetition. Now, of course, you can damp, and this is going to affect the delayed signal. So the repetitions are gonna be dark. And let me just do more so we can hear this. Is that they are really dark. And if I go all the way to the wet, we are just getting the repetitions. Notice how dark they are. And this is something very useful because sometimes, maybe, uh, maybe I'm going to go to 50%. If you do dry, you're not going to get the delay, of course. If you go to 50%, the repetitions are not in the way. You know, we get them, but we just, you know... They're in the background. If you don't damp uh, this, they're a lot, you know, very much present. Of course, this depends on what you want to do. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off, turn this off, and we're gonna go to the reverb. Again, pretty simple reverb, and it's nice that you get different types of reverb, uh, because not everything is whole reverb. So you get a room, which is gonna be a very kind of a short, uh, ish, kind of a reverb. You have your decay, you can go all the way up, and you can go to wet just to hear how this sounds. Just like the delay, you have the dampening control. So if I go all the way down, you know, the, 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 the reverb is all the way there. This is just going to cut high frequencies. And we can see it right here on the spectrum. I'm going to play something. Right now we are just listening to the reverb. Notice all the high frequencies we get. So when I do the damp, it's going to cut them. Go all the way up and play again. We are just cutting the high frequencies, and it's, uh, it's the same idea with the delay. Maybe uh, the, the 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 reverb is just too bright and it's too in the way, so you can just cut uh, the high frequencies and get it out of the way. Now, of course, uh, you're not going to do 100%. So the decay is long. If we make it shorter, now it's more like a room delay. But you can you know it's really big. Now, of course, you have different modes, which is going to be the plate, you know, it has its own type of sound, and then you can do the good old hall. And notice that they all sound different, they have like different values, and different vibes. That's the plan, right? Super different. Let me go to higher frequencies.
I cannot really like the room. Right. So that's it. That's what you get with the uh, reverb. And then, of course, at the end, you have a master, which is going to be controlling your uh, volume, overall volume uh, of your synth. And then you have the tuning on this one. You cannot go really crazy. It's going to make it flat or it's going to make it uh, sharp. Or it's going to make it flat. That's pretty much it. You cannot go to 12 semitones up or 12 down. That's how it works. So that's the whole uh, the whole video. If you like this, if you uh, find this useful, remember, of course, to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you would like to buy me a coffee, you can go to the description. You have links for Patreon. You can join Patreon. You can go to PayPal. You can uh, donate with, uh, you know, with the YouTube thanks right now. So you can do that, you know, on this channel. So if you want to buy me a coffee, you can. You have a lot of voice. If you don't, that's fine, man. That's, again, not the reason uh, wh why I'm doing this. But, but you can if you want. All right. So that's it. So see you on the next one.